Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. So today is a fun product reveal from Mei Liang Solid Watercolor 52 Colors. It's a uh, box set. Um, so I just received it the other day. I wanna give it a go with you guys. Uh, my understanding is it comes in uh, tin with a purple and blue box set. Oh, that's cute, so there's the purple. So inside I can see it has the palette still. I've been told they've updated their pigment formula, so we're gonna give it a go. So here's some accessories that it comes with in this kit. So it has a water-resistant, water-based pen, black pen, a pencil, a brush, a sponge, some information on how they make their products, and some a service number and the website and inside will be uh, where you can paint in the colors uh, so I always use this because it's really handy because what you see in the color palette on the actual paint doesn't actually represent the color all that well so it's nice to use these little blocks here to color in the um, the paint but I'm not going to do that today because I want to actually paint something uh, here's some more information We'll break down so here's the color palette here again this is still nice to use though because things like metallics i think there's yeah so there's a gold and a silver in this kit it does kind of represent it pretty good on this but not necessarily how it's going to sit on paper so the printed colors are an idea of how the paint looks but it's still nice to fill this in and uh, paint it in with the actual pigment it also comes with some watercolor paper which is what we will use today so that's fun. Love getting a ready to go kit. That's great. And here are the watercolors. So let's pull this little plastic film off. And here's our color set. So this is really nice. It's a nice range. I'm really looking forward to using these colors. I don't have any colors like that in my repertoire. And the metallics too, I'm looking forward to trying. So let's give them a go, shall we? All right, so I'm gonna use their brush as well as their watercolor paper. Let's get this open. I'm debating whether or not to paint, tape these down. Maybe I will. So what I think I'm gonna do, um, it doesn't tell me, I don't think what, what weight this watercolor paper is. Um, but it, it feels maybe, um, it's not quite, I don't think it's quite 140 pound. It's a little bit thinner than that. A little bit more lightweight, but it's still, we'll give it a go. We'll see what it's like. So I was thinking I might, um, cut these into tags. Let's see, will they fit in my punch? Ooh, just, so they're a little bit too big for my punch, but I'm going to make it work. And then we'll we'll paint some tags. So I will be right back. Okay, so I cut them into tag shapes here, which I can show you after. And then I just stuck them down with some washi tape. So I have three individual pieces of their watercolor paper. And I don't know where this washi tape's from, so I'm hoping it's a decent washi tape. I reuse it all the time, so when it gets watercolor stains on it, it's really nice to add to journals. So it's not just a one-time use here. All right, so let's do some let's do some tags. So I'm thinking of Christmas tags, and yes, I know it's a bit early, but you can never be too prepared for Christmas tags. So I thought what we do is maybe draw an idea and then just kind of maybe wing these two. I'm not sure. I'm just going to play with the paint and the products here and see see what we think of them. So I think um, maybe I'll draw a little snowman on this one. So I am gonna keep it pretty light here. I don't want too much pencil to show through. So hopefully you can see what I'm drawing. I'm just gonna sketch a little snowman. And maybe a scarf here. And then body. And then the rest of the body here. And eraser. So it doesn't come with eraser. I need an eraser here. Pencil. 
pencil's nice and sharp, that's for sure. <laughs> it's nice to use a pencil that actually is sharp pointed. So I'm always too lazy at sharpening mine. And then we'll do um, some stick arms here. I'm not going to put too much detail in the stick arms because I can paint those in. And then some buttons. So there's one. I think these two, maybe we'll just wing it. Let's just wing it. Let's see where we go. So I'm just going to use their paintbrush here, which is a number five, it says. And wet the bristles, see what we think. So we'll see how the... Um, the brush holds up so I'm going to go into some blues I don't have the colors I'll try and use the colors in front of me um, there's some really nice pastel set in here I find these are a lot of pastel colors <clears throat> which is kind of nice I don't have a huge collection of pastels so I'm just going to give them a nice kind of sunny background So it's really fun to play with new colors, that's for sure. So I'm going to do a little wet here where I want this color to drop in. So I'll use some of this. And let's try some of the richer blue. Yeah, I don't have these lined up, so it's a bit hard to read what blues I'm using. And I think it's this way. So gold is here, so it's a bit backwards for the listing. Uh, let's see, what color blue would this be? It looks like it would be cobalt blue. Which it does look like a cobalt blue, that's for sure. nice brush let's get some paper towel ready so let's maybe um, put in a little bit of this cobalt blue at the bottom it's a palette I just want to make sure that that's in there for while I'm painting I know it's a bit early for Christmas but sometimes the mood hits and uh, you kind of want to get ahead of the game. So if you do all your own Christmas cards, paint your own Christmas cards or tags, which I try to do, sometimes you have to get a head start to build up your collection. And it is nice to have these sitting around ready to use for sure. So let's see if this lifts. So I'm going to dab off the water and I'm going to pull see if the brush will pull the paint off which it does so that's a good that's a good watercolor brush that's what you're looking for as a lift to remove the paint it's nice to have that in a watercolor brush for sure so, so far good so a little bit of this pretty blue. Which blue would that be? I believe it would be Col Colbert T. Col <laughs> Colbert. Colbert? Colbert. Colbert. <laughs> T blue. Let's just kind of put some texture in the snow and see what the paint does with the paper. So far the paper's not really bubbling much, which is nice. A little bit more water oops in this spot here drop this blue in let's go with a cobalt cobalt <laughs> that's quite a bit of water actually so i'll pull some of that off so i'm just gonna absorb it with my paper towel here remove some of that water it's a bit too much This color in and again if I want to remove some I can just take the, the brush and 
dry it off a bit and then resaturate it with the color that you're removing. So again, I just I kind of dry the brush off and run it over the place I want to remove a little bit of pigment. And there's a little bit of blue right in here in the sky. So I'll put that back in. I'll let that dry for a second. We'll move over here. So I love painting berries myself. So let's use this pretty color. So you see, I'm not even using the palette yet. So there is a palette here. You just pull this plastic container out on camera. And then you have a palette. So I'll put some of that pretty red in there. And a touch of brown, perhaps. Maybe something a little darker. And what do we have for black in this collection? So where's the gold? So I have coal black and, and ivory black. Okay, so coal black is here. It's nice to have a collection of blacks because they all have different benefits and different looks, which I really love. So I'm going to just put in some berries here. I do love painting berries. It's a bit darker red than I want, so let me start again. Okay, that's a bit lighter. There we go. A bit brighter, a bit more cheerful. So I do love painting berries. I don't know why. Just these little Christmas berries kind of thing. I just find it therapeutic. Now, normally I would turn the paper so my hand can work a little bit better with painting these. I'm trying to keep my hand out of this wet blue too isn't easy. <laughs> and let's see, this tape is lifting a little bit. around. It's hard when you can't put your hand down. Stabilize your hand a little. So what's nice about painting a few things at once is it has time to dry in between. So you can let these berries dry a little bit. And then come back and give them some more details. <clears throat> they do enjoy painting with watercolor. There's something so relaxing about it. Okay. I'm going to let those dry and see where that one's going to take me. Move this over a little bit more. Do the third one. Let's play with some greens. All these pretty greens. And uh, maybe we'll do something like, uh, you know what? I am going to rotate it. I'm sorry. Just because I want to keep my hand out of that wet paint. So I'm going to put in, let's say, a sprig of pine here. So this is going to be the top of my tag. So I'm bearing that in mind while I'm throwing some of this color in. And this is a nice, simple thing to paint as well. Just choose green that you like. And just pull out a few random you can paint pine cone. It's just so Christmassy. Quite simple to paint. And then maybe another spray coming off here. There we go. 
So now I can take my color and say, add a little bit more of a richer green, deeper green. And let's see what this one is. It's a nice forest green. And then maybe a tiny bit of, I'm gonna assume this is raw sienna. What, do, what would it be? Let's see. It would be dark brown, gold orchid, gold or orchard, dark brown. I'm going the wrong way, sorry. <laughs> Ivory black. Yeah, so raw umber, burnt, burnt brown. And this must be Indian red. Hmm. So there you go, different colors. Way different than what I thought they were. So let's go back into some green. Let's try this olive green. I kind of like this olivey green. Let's go with this. Let's give this a go. Some darker ones. Of course, certain, you'd wait for a certain amount to dry so that it doesn't overbleed. I just want these to bleed a little bit. And we'll go back to the snowman. So, I'll flip it around again. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm not driving you nuts. I'm going to hold the palette here because I don't want it to touch that green. And we'll put in some uh, details in his hat. Let's go with some red. Be a little bit more red and less pink. So let's maybe give him a stripe here, a stripey hat. Just play with your watercolor. So, so far these colors are really quite pretty. I do really want to play with that um, soft apricot colors. I want to do maybe, maybe I'll do some abstract watercolor painting. I don't think I've ever tried that before. I've always gone with the paint something specific with my watercolors. Oh, that might be fun to try. especially with the pen I've provided with the kit. So this is not a paid promotion. This is just a, um, a product review. They asked me if I'd like to try the kit and I say, yes, I would. And then they ship it to me. And then I paint something with you guys, which I really enjoy doing. I mean, getting free product is always wonderful. But sometimes you can get product you really don't like. I think it's kind of awkward. But I really do like these. I, I've already refu uh, re reviewed um, another set of theirs. So I thought, why not try this one? This is their newest release, I believe. And like I said, it comes in the purple and blue tins. It's an updated formula. They've had, they said they've improved their pigment. And... Um, it's uh, a nice little travel size, I think, anyways. So this brush is starting to give me some hairs. So let's see if I can cut those hairs off. Don't want, don't want any protruding, uneven hair. There we go, that's better. Because it makes for a messy line. And then we'll just do a little bit on the inside here. Let that dry. So you can see I'm contouring my lines, trying to mimic the direction the fabric is folded in. Just adds to a little bit more interest and touch of realism in the in the uh, painting. 
So I can do his buttons and his eyes. So let's go into, that's green. That looks green. why that green is there. Maybe that's a the coal black. It could be. Like I said, I'm new to this palette, so it looked a little green. So I'm going to just fill in his little coal buttons. So I'll use coal black. I just find it so relaxing to paint these for Christmas. And they're a cute little extra gift on a present to someone special. I'm also going to do his nose while we have, um, before we paint the um, snowman, the rest of the snowman. I'm going to give him a nice coat of orange and we'll do his smile, which I think I will also do in the little coals. And maybe his sticks too. His little stick arms. I might lift some of this color off on this side. It's a bit dark. I might want to put, so you see how the, the brush absorbs the color right back up? And that you unload using your paper towel and just unload some of that color. And that's a good watercolor brush when it does that. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a bit. We'll come back here, let's draw some holly in here. I think I'm gonna do some holly on this side. I'm going to spin it this way and keep my hands out of the snowman. So let's do some holly here and I'm just doing this out of my head. Trying to remember what Holly looks like. I could be very wrong. <laughs> so I remember it has that kind of spiky. Spiky ends to it. I don't have Holly trees where I live. It's too cold. Unfortunately, I might do some more berries up here. Let's delete that for now. And again, I, I don't know if Holly looks like this or not. I'm just having fun. I could pull up a reference, I suppose. So let's do some minty bright green on this one. Um, Trying to figure out which is the best way for you guys to see. This is kind of a fun color. Never used a color like this before. Let's use it. Let's go for it. That's kind of modern. <laughs> a modern green. So that's pretty thick, opaque color I'm using right now. But it's such a vivid, bright green. I can't help myself. Just want to slap it on. Let's see what it does. So I am painting this with just the one brush. I'm not switching to a smaller brush. So you could switch to a smaller brush for even more finer detail. But uh, for the sake of product review, I'm going to just use their brush. Which so far I like. It's nice and soft. Seems pretty pliable. I'm really liking the color palette. This green's really fun. What is this green called? 
Uh, I think it's called Grass Green in this collection. So let's maybe add a touch of a different green while it's wet. Let's see what we think. A little less water. And that's the thing with watercolor, it's just so easy to play with. You just have to let yourself have fun with it. Don't stress too much. Try not to make it perfect. Like I said, I'm just winging it here, so these might turn out. They might get uh, used in collage. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but I just want to have fun trying it. Okay. So let's go back to this guy. Sorry, I'm going to spin it again. Yeah, this washi tape's not the best. It's peeling up. So I might have picked the wrong tape for this project, but that's all right. So let's go a little more dramatic in this green. So we got the brown. I think we'll go with a deeper green here. Real Christmas green. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit just to keep my hand out of that green. I feel like I still need to rotate it more. I'm gonna get my hand in there for sure. I kind of like the softness of this already. Not sure I wanna put too much more in it. Maybe just a sparkle of this green. I don't like that. So I'm gonna pull some of that off. Try and keep it to this very fine line here. I'm just pulling it away from the center. I go up in a few spots for the ones growing towards me. Okay, a little bit more darker here. So this green's completely changed the look of it. So you can see how the palette can instantly change the overall appearance of things. I think I'm going to add a little bit of brown in this for the, uh, the stem here. So this is almost dry on dry that I'm working with right now. Pull up that stem, pull it in here. And again, that pencil that they've provided can also create some really nice details. I'm gonna soften that. Okay. I think what I'll do is just put, um, what have I got here? I'll just use this for now and put some splashes on there. Maybe, uh, maybe dilute just a little bit of the splashes. Let's do some green. And dilute a few around the edges because I like a white border. Assuming my tape sticks, it's probably going to be a bit of a messy border, but that's okay. 
Just gonna rub some of that in. Again, very loose approach. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry a bit and then I will add in some more splash. Let's go back to our snowman, it should be dry by now. Make sure he's in frame here. Push down our tape that keeps wanting to pop up. And let's give the snowman a little something. So I'm gonna go back to that, back to that blue. that we used originally in the sky. And I'm gonna put a little, little bit of shading in his body here. Oops, grab some of that button. The button wasn't dry. It's okay. Let's have a little bit of a different color. Around his face. A stronger shadow. So you do want to make sure that certain things are dry when you're doing these so that it doesn't all run everywhere like it's doing right now. <laughs> and if it overdoes it then you just kind of pull it back up with your with your brush. So no need to panic. It's a good way to learn when you make mistakes too, how to fix things. If you've overshot it or if you're using pretty decent materials like good paints and good brush, good paper, watercolor can be more forgiving than you think. I'm not liking how his mouth is run here. I'm gonna let that dry for a bit. a little bit off so it doesn't get too dirty so I know his buttons are still wet now so stay out of those I just want to give him some color I'm not covering all the white but I feel like I want to give him a little something separation from the background. A lot of blue, but it's nice. At least I think it is anyways. And then of course you know I'm going to add some browns because that's how I roll. I like things warm. So let's do some brown here. What's this one? Mix the brown with my blue. How about that? Create this nice warm greeny gray color. Let's see here. What do I want to do with this? Do I want to use it in his? No. Oops. Don't do that. Let's see. Maybe I'll darken the background a little. Make him pop forward a bit more. This tape. Let's go a little darker back here. Forever changing my mind. <laughs> go in here too. And around its little head. Put this color over here. There, he's popping a little forward now. I found the the blue black the blue background was competing with the foreground. So now we've kind of isolated him a little better. We can try something like putting a dot of color in. So I'm gonna go back to this light blue, seeing what the reaction is with the paint when I do that. See how it spreads out. That's fun. Now there is a white. Let's try it. 
I don't use white often when I watercolor. I just use the paper. But let's see what it, if it does anything. I'm going to add a little dot of white inside the background as well. See if it feels a little bit like snow or kind of soften it a little bit more. See what we think of that. You can always paint the white inside the snowman as well if you wanted. Kind of bleed those colors together. My buttons are still pretty wet. So I'm going to stay out of there. And the buttons here in his mouth are still pretty wet too. So I'm going to stay out of there. Let's put a little shading in his hat. So I'm going to go back to the reds. Wet them again and then add a touch of black in there. Create a little darker, a few darker spots in his hat here. Just to add a little bit of dimension to the fabric. Same with his scarf. So anywhere the light wouldn't hit quite as well, would go a little bit darker. Staying out of that wet blue, of course. Uh, maybe under here a little. Spreading it out. Anywhere you think the shading would be in his scarf. Just for fun. Good practice, too. Kind of like the muted spotted background that did. That's fun. Okay, let's do a few more because this video is getting pretty long. But we're having fun, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Add a few more berries here. Again, I'm going to rotate it. It's still pretty wet over there, too. Go back to that red. This watercolor paper is pretty good, actually. It hasn't bowed much. It's got a pretty good absorbency rate. holding the colors nicely. It's going to add some of that green into that brown just for a different, a little bit darker. It's going to hit the bottom of the berries here. Maybe give them a bit of a shadow, figure out which one's in front, which one's in back. This one can be in the back here. And that one can be in front, so this one will be in back. And get to decide what berry goes where by putting the shadows in. I'll probably be showing another video on more berries because I do love painting them. And I'd probably have them better sketched out. I wouldn't wing it like I did on this, but this is more about playing with the paint than anything else. I'm going to go back into that really fun bright green and I'm going to add it to the background. Try and stay away from my wet berries. Oops, got my berry. Got my berry. erase that berry. There we go. We'll let that dry for a minute because I want to do some details on the um, on the holly and I want to spray this one a little bit more. I think it's dry enough that I can splatter it. So let's get some splattering done on that. Use some green here just for something a little bit more rustic looking. Maybe let's try the gold. So I'm going to try and wake this gold up. Let's see how it mixes here. OK, 
kind of wake it up a little bit. I hope it's some gold lines on. So when we move it into the light, it's nice and reflective. I love gold in watercolor. We'll see how this gold holds up because not all gold water paint, watercolor paints are good. Some of them are a little dull when they dry. They're a little deceiving. They look nice wet, but then when you actually go to finish painting with them, they don't look so hot. I'm going to put a little bit in the background. So I'm going to put some on. Pretty thick. And then I'm going to take my watercolor brush here with some water and bring it, thin it out a little. We'll see how that dries. See the effect that the gold paint might have. This is still pretty wet. I think I'm just going to put the sticks in the snowman. And maybe a little tiny little brownish gray in his hat here just so it has a little little something in the something in the pom-pom come in my frame <laughs> let's just go with the black actually we'll just put a little bit of brown in and then we'll draw his arms in with the pen so we'll use just a touch of brown here and warm up his sticks and I think the snowman's going to be done his scarf bled too but that's kind of fun it is a watercolor you can try and remove some by wetting it and rubbing it off So if you're using, again, good quality products, it will let you do that. The paper will let you do that so many times. And then it starts to break down. So there, soften that up a bit. I did want to put a bit of a shadow underneath these buttons, but I don't know if they're dry. This one's not a little wet in the middle just to kind of make it look like they are shoved in the snow so, darken up that eye okay we'll leave that and then maybe we'll just do what should we do in here i think we need the implication of more leaves in the background a bit so i'm just going to do kind of like a little patchy some brown just some color like off color in the background here with no detail it's kind of like a out of focus leaves staying out of my wet berries because this video is getting a little long Just something so that it finishes off a little bit more. It's like if it was a photograph and these dark greens were leaves that were out of focus. Kind of look. All right, we're going to let that dry. And then we'll play with the pen. Okay, so we're pretty dry now. Let's use the um, uh, pigment liner 0 0.5. It uh, comes with the, with the set here. So we'll give it a go. So there's the uh, 0 0.5 nib. And I thought we'd just maybe enhance some of these little paintings a little bit. So I just do want to make sure that they are dry. So I'm going to pull out some of the details that I didn't paint in because I really like the, the combination of a pen and watercolor. It's just, 
always been kind of my go-to. Um, I find it's a nice way to, to accent certain things. So you can see I'm not drawing around every, every, like finishing every line perfect. I just want to enhance things a little bit. So I'm going to give it a vein. And of course you could have done that in the watercolor paint as well. And maybe I will go around a few berries here. Just maybe isolate a, a few in within the sketch like that. And again, you can put some other lines to imply these <coughs> holly, can't talk and draw, holly leaves in the background. I just really like kind of adding these details with a pen after. And you can give it veins and put as much or as little detail as you want. And then maybe some texture. So you can put some dots in here. This pen's quite nice, it's very thick in the sense that it lands down a lot of, puts down a lot of um, ink. So it's quite saturated. So just a little something in there, just for fun. See where it takes you. Okay, let's move to our snowman who I believe is also dry. So I'm going to pull out a little bit of detail here in his scarf and maybe a little bit of sketching in the, we didn't give him any fun ends on his scarf, which is always fun to do. And this is a nice thing too, if you're, if you're not a hundred percent in love with your watercolor, you can hide mistakes and things like that by using the pen, which I do often. I make a lot of mistakes. I'm usually quite impatient with my watercolor. So as you can see, things bleed more than I would like them to. But then I just come back with my pen and have some fun with it. I don't stress over it. And just darken his eye a little bit in here. Bring them to life. And then go around the hat a little bit. Pom pom. And then we'll bring the stick. So you can see you can really bring the stick back here. Got a little lost in the background. I just got hands. Get back the buttons a little. Little coal buttons. Give the coal a little texture. There. And again, you can do texture in the background and enhance these dots. I really like this muted. Um, drop-in that we did with the, the different colors and the whites and stuff. That's kind of fun. It kind of gives it a, a snowy vibe or even things out of focus behind him, which is kind of fun. You can put dots on him if you want. Do anything you want. Okay, and we'll go over to this one. So the gold turned out really pretty, actually. The gold, I'm really hoping you guys can see the gold. Um, it's it's a very luminous and it's very reflective and rich, which is nice. So it's a nice gold paint, which is great to see. So I'm gonna put in um, just a little bit of 
contrast in here. Don't want too much in this one. I like the softness of it. I feel like I want to add a little something now. Just one more layer of interest. And then we'll take them off. some long ones out for fun look let's do that there we go I'll sign them and let's take tape off hopefully you didn't bleed too much with this wash tape see how well it didn't stick well, so far so good. I'm just going to stick it to my table here because, like I said, I will use it again in other projects. And it's too pretty to waste. There's our little tags. They turned out so cute. I like them. We did pretty good, I'd say. I like it. I really like this guy, how bold he is on that paper. It's really cute. How fun would that be to receive on uh, Christmas as a gift? Now, where do I put my paintbrush? What I'm going to do now, just to warm up the edges, is I will take some of that um, blue, say, and maybe a little bit of brown. And I'm just going to really wet my brush and just run along. So instead of using ink, I'm just going to use the watercolor. to warm up the sides so they're not quite so stark. You can use zinc, of course, but in this case, I think I'm just going to use a little bit of the watercolor. Maybe just a little across here, just to finish off the tag a bit. I like that. There we go. I'll do the same for this one. But I think what I want to do with this one first is maybe draw a little bit of the black around here. Let's see what I think. Again, not a whole solid line, very sketchy. Just kind of mimic the, the feel inside here. And then maybe I'll use black for this one. Rub a little bit along the edge. You could use a marker. Could we use the gold? Ooh, that'd be nice. Let's do that. Is that gold? Who doesn't love gold paint? Gold? Oh, I hope you can see how it shimmers. And it shimmies actually even brighter when it's dry. So it's a very nice metallic paint. <clears throat> there we go. And then the last one, we'll use some green, I think, or maybe some red. Let's have a look what we think. I think we'll go, I think we'll go red. Red green. <laughs> And then you put the to and from on the back and you get a really nice tag. Or you can use a sticker on the back so that you can reuse the tags every year. They are a lot of work, but they are, to me, they're part of the gift. Which I really like. <clears throat> Something personalized like this. Put just a rough line in here just because that's the look I like. Okay, so there we go. There's our three tags. So overall, I give this paint and this new line here a big thumbs up. I really enjoy the, um, I really enjoy the color palette. It's got some metallics in it, which is great. It's a perfect little travel set. It carries all your tools in there. 
including a pallet. And I'll just shove this back in so you can see. Your pencil, your, come on, go in, there we go. <laughs> your pencil, your pen, and your brush. I'll go back in and then you've got a nice little travel set and again I still only I I still have tons of watercolor paint to, paper to use which could also be your travel set so I would keep this just so it keeps your paper clean and then your scraps can go in there along with your legend and you're good to go so big thumbs up to the new Mei Liang 52 color uh, watercolor set and um, accessories and a little tin case all right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that review. Let me know, give me a thumbs up. I will attach all the links for the product below if you are interested and uh, check them out. Okay, guys, take care. Bye.